city limits. The show was just getting started, and they had um, their studio was in some place in Queens. Astoria. I think it was in Astoria, and so they they were training their whole um, um, crew. They were training the 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 lighting guys and the sound guys, and they wanted to they wanted to have a live show to for them to train on. So somehow or other, they got a hold of us, and they put us in front of a live audience. And on the Cosby stage, which was really fun, uh, we had all these doors and, and furniture, real furniture. Um, yeah, they wanted us to use the different rooms so that the, the crew could get used to making cuts um, from one room to another room and, and doing the sound and all that. So we were, that, was, that was our responsibility to keep moving around in, in um, the different pieces. Um, and and we, you know, we, we took a look at it and we figured out where we might do this piece and where we might do that piece. And um, it was, uh, you know, a live audience and that, that was a lot of fun. <laughs> Mom, Dad, this is David. David Goldberg. <laughs> Well, how do you do? Pleased to meet you, Mrs. Zabaglione. Oh. <laughs> Just call me Carmella. <laughs> Mr. Well, Melba, I got a question for you. You know, we do a lot of stage work, and TV's so different with the cameras, the lights, the audiences in different places. You've done both. What do you see as the big difference? Um, is it easier to do TV, easier to do stage, or is it just different? Um, it's very different. It's, it's, it's a lot of fun doing um doing stage because like with television you can't see if an audience is really appreciating what you're doing uh -huh. but with stage you get you get the feedback right or <laughs> <laughs> right right shakespeare is the one that rang out and with those suggestions we take you to that little known shakespearean play entitled beat it <laughs> Yea, my lady, enter. You must beat it, we must away. The worst has happened. It is true, your husband has found that you and I have been consorting together. Behind his back, here in the hallowed halls of his palace, oh, so beautifully adorned as it is. Then it is true. We must beat it. And quickly. We must beat it for the hills, beat it for a place far better than this. For if he does find me, he shall have my head. No! I won't let him. Well, I will keep it upon thy neck always. And he shall have my foot. I will keep thy foot upon my leg. Oh, he shall have my arm. Freeze! Lonely. Now, there's a reason this woman does not like her husband. What is it about her husband? He's ugly. He's ugly. <laughs> and we're going to find this out in a different playwright or theater style. Neil Simon. Neil Simon. <laughs> Hiya, cream puff! It's enough, Sydney. it's enough, please. Ah! Bobby, how are you? Fine, Sid, how are Good you? Good to see you. Imagine the two of you in the same place. Oh, yeah. you know. You're my little queenie, don't you forget that, huh? Yes, Sydney. yeah. Look, uh, did you go for your, uh, your appointment with the plastic surgeon today? Absolutely, but I decided the money's better spent shellacking my face, so I stay the way I am. Okay, here we go. In five, four, three, two... Hello, Paul. Doctor. Paul, I'm afraid I have some bad news for you. <laughs> I was afraid of that. I guess there's no use. Well, you do have one option. I do? Sure. When a man is getting sicker, cause he's got a bum ticker and his leg on the cart. Don't 
unconsciously they're dozing while your ventricles are closing. Get an artificial heart. Without a Jarvik 7, you'd probably be in heaven with Kierkegaard and Sartre. Oh. Why the existential when you can have potential with an artificial heart? Picture me, a battery, a reverse polarity. Soon I'm on TV, quelling fear. With a pair of jumper cables and an artificial heart.